Peter, on Monday, July 11th, 2022, it is 7 p.m. This meeting is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first up tonight is approval of the agenda. The agenda has been distributed. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The agenda is approved. Next is the approval of the minutes. Minutes from the June 27, 2022 meeting are on pages five through eight. Are there any uh, changes or additions to the minutes? I had contacted earlier um, for a, to correct a typo, it's on page five. It's about uh, three paragraphs down in the visitor section to change die to drive. Uh, with that change, um, motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Minutes are approved. Next, we have visitors' comments. Uh, members of the audience wishing to address the council on any agenda items may do so at this time. Any visitors on agenda items? All right, seeing none, we'll go to general visitors' comments. And we have Joey Shugel here to kind of kick us off for the Pickleball Association recognition. Thank you, Joey. Oh, okay, Mayor Pro Tem and Councilors, I am excited to be here tonight uh, to and accept an award uh, for our outdoor pickleball courts. And just as most of you know, our outdoor pickleball courts were installed in last fall and it was a great partnership, uh, a, a, lo a long-standing tradition of what the city has done in the past with other user groups, but it was a great partnership with our, our city staff, public works staff, recreation staff, and our very invested Pickleball Association, as you can see behind me. Um, so this was, it was a great project, but before I get into too many details, I want to introduce to you all um, Alyssa Fram from the Minnesota Recreation and Parks Association Awards Committee is here tonight. Thank you, Joey. Good evening, Pro Tem Mayor and Council members. It is an honor to be here tonight and present the Minnesota Recreation and Parks Association 2021 Award of Excellence for the City of St. Peter for the Veterans Park Outdoor Pickle. Before I do that, I'm just going to take a few moments Nine hundred professional, corporate, board and commission, student and retiree members that make up the association. Members come from municipal, county, state, district, commercial, and private agencies. The Minnesota Recreation and Park Association Office is located in Fridley, Minnesota. The MRPA Awards Committee created in nineteen eighty seven with the purpose of acknowledging individual members and agencies for their excellence in the field of parks recreation and leisure services. Awards committee members represent the cross-section of the association in the state of Minnesota. The, the awards committee feels it is important to increase awareness of and appreciation for the excellent parks, trails, facilities, recreation programs, and services that we have in Minnesota. That is why the Awards of Excellence program was created. The Awards of Excellence program is presented by Minnesota Recreation and Park Association and proudly sponsored by our partner. The Awards of Excellence is an annual program of the Minnesota Recreation and Park Association that was solely created to recognize agencies and their staff for an exemplary project that was either implemented in 2021 or received substantial revisions in 2021. MRPA members may nominate a project for an award of excellence in seven different categories. 
administrative or management strategies, communications, park and facility, programming and events, sponsorship and partnerships, and sustainability and volunteer initiatives. Nominations received are then reviewed, evaluated, and scored by the committee. Only the top <laughs> scoring nominations are selected to receive the Award of Excellence recognition. On behalf of the MRPA Awards Committee, it is my pleasure tonight to present the Award of Excellence to the City of St. Peter for its winning project, the Veterans Park Outdoor Pickleball Courts. We'd also like to recognize the Pickleball Association of St. Peter <coughs> and their partnership with the city. Anything to add, Todd, or yeah. are ready to Any well, questions or comments? Well, so is it traditional for everyone to, like they do with the Stanley Cup, pass it around and everybody is that <laughs> kind of the tradition? All right. So um, with the mayor's approval, um, she'll signal a recess. And then if you don't mind, we'll go down into the lobby and get a picture with everyone. Does that sound good? All right. All right. We'll take a brief recess at 7.06 p.m. All right. This is my speech. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, some of the DNR project and we coupled along with their presence in town here to get outstanding uh, prices for that installation as well. Uh, the plaza project itself finished at 127, 839, 30, which was pretty close to budget and pretty close to on time. And again, our grant, uh, our additional sidewalk that was installed by Pember uh, mounted to 33,198 and those funds will be paid for from the DNR uh, from one of the grants that we received there. What I'm asking you to do tonight is approve the resolution on page 28 that would finish this project and authorize final payment. Any questions for Pete? Hearing none, the resolution is on page 28 uh, for accepting Minnesota Square Park North Plaza project and authoriz authorizing final payment to the contractor. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. The motion and a second. Um, call the roll, please, Barb. Councilmember Pettis? Aye. Councilmember Sharstrom? Aye. Councilmember Boothland? Aye. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have new business. The first item is the 2021 <laughs> audit acceptance, and we have someone to come talk with us about that. Jim, come forward. The floor is yours. Council members, my name is Jim Eichten. I'm with MMTR CPAs here this, this evening to give a uh, presentation on the audit report for the year ended December 31st, 2021. Todd uh, um, is uh, rolling up my PowerPoint presentation. Um, so first of all, it's important to understand the purpose for me being here this evening. Uh, it is a requirement in uh, state law that the city have an annual financial statement prepared. That particular annual financial statement uh, is a quite a lengthy document. It's about 130 pages long and has been uh, 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 distributed um, as of uh, a couple, uh, maybe a week or two ago. Um, so it is a requirement also in state law that the city hire an independent certified public accountant to audit that particular document. So as part of that particular role, uh, we uh, are uh, issuing opinions on that financial statements, but we're also uh, testing the internal controls of the city, specifically over financial reporting. We're also required to uh, test your compliance with various internal controls uh, with law laws and regulations that relate to that financial reporting. Probably the best example is your, your compliance with grants that you're receiving or any sort of state aids that you're receiving. Uh, the State Auditor's Office also requires us to audit your compliance with state laws and regulations they uh, give us a list of all the laws that we're, that we're testing on an annual basis. And then lastly, we, were, we uh, are to audit your federal awards if the city were to receive more than $750,000 of federal awards in any calendar year. This past year, the city did not uh, exceed that threshold, so a single audit of federal awards is not uh, completed. So as part of our uh, audit process, we also issue what's called the management report. Uh, the management report is a document that summarizes the audit results as well as goes, goes through a number of uh, required communications as well as summarizes the financial results. So I'm going to uh, go through that document and summarize uh, uh, the results for you in that manner. So uh, first of all, we were able to issue an unmodified opinion, uh, which is a clean opinion. It was the opinion you were looking for as part of this particular process. Uh, your financial report at the city has a couple of, uh, or at least two unique uh, uh, areas, one of uh, which is that you are, are including the financial results of the River's Edge Hospital and Clinic. Uh, they are defined as a component unit of the city. Uh, we as your auditor don't audit those, that particular entity. It is audited by another CPA firm, but we rely on their opinion to uh, issue our opinion. The same is said for the Housing and Redevelopment Authority. We don't audit them, although their data is included in your financial report due to the fact that they're a component unit. So in my management report, I did go through a, a couple of findings that we've had this year, uh, specifically related to internal controls. Uh, the first one, we did uh, during our audit process make one, one financial statement adjustment specifically in the area of accounts payable over over contracts, over uh, uh, construction contracts. So it is important as part of the process when the auditor makes an adjustment that we consider significant or material 
uh, to report that as part of this particular process. Uh, um, we don't really have a concern specifically related to that, albeit uh, recommending that uh, the internal accounting staff will watch closer over some of those accounting entries at the end of the year next year so that uh, those adjustments can be avoided. Uh, the second finding you'll see on the page relates to segregation of duties. Uh, uh, in our testing of internal controls uh, of the city's uh, uh, financial statements, we uh, automatically consider the city's uh, uh, internal controls um, not perfectly segregated. Uh, uh, segregation of duties relate, relates to the processing of transactions such that uh, a transaction really is segregated um, uh, amongst individual people throughout the, the process. The, probably the best example is accounts payable that somebody that receives the invoice has to be different than the person that, that approves the invoice has to be different than the person that pays the, writes the check and it has to be different than a person that reconciles the bank account. So I just described four individual people in one transaction cycle. The city's finance staff doesn't uh, have that size or depth uh, uh, to create an, a perfect segregation of duties. So in our, pro in our audit process, we, we uh, uh, go to a default, uh, um, I'll call a default perspective on the audit in that we understand that you're not relying on those particular controls, you're relying on other compensating controls um, in your internal control systems. So we, we need to report that to the city council, but we don't recommend that you change anything as a result. So I mentioned your uh, uh, findings and your opinion for Minnesota Legal Appliance. Um, we did issue two findings related to that particular area. The first one relates to the timely payment of invoices. Uh, Minnesota state statutes require uh, city governments to pay its invoices within 35 days of either receipt of the invoice or receipt of the services, whatever comes later. Um, this particular audit period, we did uh, note three of the 25 disbursements that we tested were not paid within that 35-day time frame. Uh, this is a very common finding um, uh, for a city. Uh, uh, things, you know, uh, invoices and processing can be delayed. There are uh, challenges in that area. Uh, COVID can, the COVID experience has, has created a lot of findings, particularly in this area. Uh, we haven't had this finding too often in the city, um, in my experience, and, and uh, uh, um, certainly this city staff has looked into each individual invoice that I referenced as part of this testing and is working towards eliminating that particular finding moving forward. So on the last item you'll note, uh, we did uh, note the uh, city did have a finding related to uh, Minnesota statutes related to quotes. Anytime the city purchases uh, or has payments for contracts that exceed uh, 25,000 but are less than the bid, throw, bid, bid threshold of 175,000, you're required to get two or more quotes for purchases. Uh, so for one of the six contracts, we tested that particular documentation uh, in terms of um, uh, um, getting those quotes was not on file. It is our understanding that th that particular item that we tested was actually uh, uh, a state contract. Uh, uh, thus, you could use the state contract methods to purchase that. Uh, but the city did not have that in, in readily available documentation. Um, so don't, again, don't have any real concerns uh, with this particular finding. Uh, um, so I did mention the three findings, I guess the one uh, finding specifically to segregation duties that uh, uh, I want to give perspective to. Uh, it has been my experience with the city that these findings uh, are, are, are a big concern uh, for city staff. They take it very seriously. Uh, they ask over and over, what was that finding again? What can I do? And can we write a corrective action plan? How are we going to correct this moving forward? You'll see in, a, in my documents there is a management response to these findings and how they're going to correct them moving forward, and I fully anticipate that they will. Uh, uh, evidence of that, if you look at last year's uh, audit, there, are, uh, there were three particular findings of similar, uh, not, uh, 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 that come out of audit processes, and all three findings have been eliminated this year through follow-up testing and through follow-up uh, response. Uh, a very important uh, element of an audit is that these findings, as they come up, are corrected in the next year's audit. So I'll move forward then to the second part of the audit, uh, which is the financial results. Um, I think that's where we're at. 
Yeah, you can move one more, I guess. Thank you, Todd. So the, uh, 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 an audit of this nature um, has two components to it, one of which is the compliance area, second of which is the financial results. So I'll try to touch on some of the financial results that are reflected in my report. Uh, the first one is a reflection on the market values in the city. You can see uh, this is a 10-year perspective of the city's taxable market values. And after the uh, reception, reception that hit uh, many market values back in 2008-9 and into uh, all the way into 2013, we've seen market values increasing in your city but also statewide. In 2021, uh, taxes market values went up about 12% in the city. So certainly a, a trend that you're seeing statewide, but also probably higher than we're seeing in other cities. What that does for you is uh, really uh, keeps the average tax rates uh, 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 flat and really at a moderate increase level. You can see the city's average tax rate as expressed here ha ha has gone up, well, hardly at all, if you will, in 2021, 51.7 compared to 51.6 in 2020. What that means to the city is that you are generating uh, 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 similar, uh, you can go to the next one, Todd. Uh, uh, what that means to the city is you can see here is the revenue. This is a, the graph showing governmental funds revenue on a per capita basis. Uh, and you can see that the property tax revenues were generated from that rate and that increase in, in market values were similar to the prior year at $269 uh, dollars per resident. Overall, the city's uh, total revenue in the governmental funds is about $872, which compares to a, a city a statewide of about $1,213. Uh, you, you might wonder, well, why that is. Uh, the city does have a, a significant amount of non-taxable uh, 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 property in the city. Thus, uh, um, that particular overall revenue by a resident per resident is lower specifically relating to that and the city's relying a little bit more on its enterprise funds and has traditionally done that uh, um, in the past which is not very different any different than what we've seen for this year a couple of other areas i want to point out here that stand out to me and that is in the area of intergovernmental revenues you can see uh, 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 state aids and other intergovernmental revenues did decrease to 343 dollars per resident compared to 416 the year before. All of that relates to the pandemic uh, coronavirus relief funds that were received in 2020. On the expenditure side of things, uh, um, this shows governmental funds expenditures on a per capita basis. The city spent about $1,100 per resident broken down into debt service, capital areas, and then really just current uh, 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 expenditures. Overall, the city's current expenditures are about $782 per resident. And if you look at the statewide number, it's about $770. So very similar to what you would experience in a different city of your size uh, 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 in the state of Minnesota. We like to focus as auditors on the, on the debt service number. You can see in the governmental funds, the city's debt service on an annual basis is about $123 compared to $191 per resident. Um, I'll get to some of the other debt service areas, but that number certainly is a positive one for an auditor like myself. It shows uh, good debt service control. So moving on, uh, the city does uh, have individual in funds, and you can see the results here. The overall fund balance, the equity position in the city's funds increased about 620000 about eight hundred and or excuse me, 480,000 of that was in the general fund, a, a positive change this past year in that uh, uh, the particular fund. This graph does show the general fund's financial position over the last five years using that same fund balance, equity position, cash uh, to show cash position, and then really expenditure showing the volume of change. Uh, overall, the city's fund balance finished the year at about or not about, it was 54.9% of, uh, uh, of, of expenditures, which is slightly above the, the, the fund balance policy the city has and a little bit above uh, uh, recommended levels that you might experience in um, a city of your size, but certainly very close to what you would expect and really showing not only a solid financial position, but one that is increasing slightly from year to year, which is certainly a positive trend for the city. 
We have a number of other graphs here. I'm not going to touch on all of them. I will just highlight some of the areas here. The general, this one shows uh, the general fund revenues by source. I mentioned that little blip in intergovernmental revenue uh, last year. I mentioned property taxes. And there was an increase in the levy last year that you can see uh, in that particular trend line. On the expenditure side of the equation in the general fund, uh, you're seeing some uh, uh, pretty similar levels that you would experience in, in most cities. Public safety is a large, per, uh, uh, a large cost to any city, and that is an ever-increasing area for both uh, um, your city but uh, all cities within the state of Minnesota, uh, an important area of local government costs. So moving on to the next graph, we do have a, more information on uh, the enterprise funds of the city. The city does have a number of enterprise funds. Uh, you can see them there. We do provide a, uh, uh, a presentation here showing the fund balance, the equity position uh, in each of those funds from one year to the next. Overall, you can see the total enterprise funds equity position increased uh, by about 728,000. Uh, most of that was in the wastewater and the electric funds. Uh, we do provide uh, information on individual uh, um, funds as well, showing uh, information on the electric fund operations. Uh, as an auditor, I like to focus on the green line. If you look at the green line, it's really uh, income before uh, any sort of transfers. So you can see this particular electric fund, uh, its income was about 1.2 uh, and has shown steady income levels over the last five years presented. Uh, the electric fund did see about a 9% increase in revenues this past year, mostly due to uh, uh, um, um, usage, and there were some one-time rebates that came from, uh, I'll call it SIMPA, but it's Southern Minnesota Municipal Power uh, is, is where that came from. If you look uh, uh, at the water fund, uh, this, this particular fund is, is probably one of the more critical funds when it comes to overall uh, evaluation by staff uh, because of its uh, 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 position in terms of the amount of debt that it has on its books. Uh, you can see in the green line here, uh, it had an income of about 250000 uh, uh, but has been above the zero line for a number of years and, and also increasing. This particular fund had revenues increasing of about uh, five, four, 5%. But most of that was in the consumption areas. Um, what other one do I have? Uh, the wastewater fund, as you can see here, is also experiencing good, uh, if not better than expected results in terms of income. Uh, again, about $950,000 income in, in 2021, as well as the last five years. And what do I got? There we go. So the last graph I want to present, and there's actually one after this, but they correlate. Um, we do do like to reflect uh, on the, this presentation the outstanding debt on a per capita basis for the city. I referenced that, that earlier in my comments. Uh, um, you can see here, this is in the governmental funds. The city has about 770, excuse me, $727 of uh, uh, debt per resident. Uh, most of that is in the uh, uh, general obligation debt. There is some tax increment debt. Now, when you look at this one, you can see that that total is significantly lower than the statewide numbers for various categories, uh, which has been, the, been uh, the case for a few years, and you can see it has gone down uh, since 2019. When you look at the next graph, uh, the outstanding debt per capita uh, in the enterprise funds has gone down. You can see uh, uh, there that the total enterprise fund debt per resident has gone from $2,200 per resident down to $1,700 per resident. Uh, quickly, uh, the city's paying down those debt obligations. Why that's important is when you look at the, the comparables, you can see that total enterprise fund debt in the city is, is significantly higher than, than your peers, uh, about $1,700 uh, compared to $833. Um, uh, that being said, this is a uh, um, this 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 level of debt has been in place for quite a while, um, and I can say myself, I saw some of the projections that were maybe was that five six years ago now, mm -hmm. guessing, uh, and looking at those projections, it couldn't have held more true to form the, to what we're experiencing today. So um, all of those projections, all that information that you're getting, 
can be relied upon to, to hold true and to, to really believe in as council members. And, and that's really what I'm here to assert tonight. Uh, this audit is very positive and, and uh, everything is in good shape at the city of St. Peter. So with that, I'll summarize, I believe, I hope. There we go, one more is enough. There is some accounting and auditing updates that are exciting to the average accountant, but I won't get into those. <laughs> <laughs> one more? <laughs> yeah, what's that? Is it one more? <laughs> uh, no, that's good, right this there. Okay. Uh, so I did, in summary, did issue a clean opinion on those basic financial statements. Uh, uh, we did have the two internal control reportable items and the two <coughs> legal compliance findings, uh, most importantly, that the city is working to, uh, to develop corrective action plans and, and so that uh, the findings will be corrected for next year. And lastly, I did mention the administration's ongoing assessment of projections. Uh, uh, as I work with the city and have for a number of years, uh, um, the, the city does an excellent job of managing the overall financial uh, perspective and the picture as well as putting together great documents like you got this, this past week in this audit report. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to you guys for questions. Thank you, Todd. Did you have anything to add? The, the only things that I'd like to add is here are the reports that we have, and we ensure they'll be on the website within about a week so anybody can take a look at them. We also have them at the library so folks can check them out from behind the counter if they don't uh, want to use the online version that's available to folks. Um, Jim, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but most of what you presented is a part of the management report. Right. Yep. And so unless you're looking for the bigger with all the numbers, this is a really easy thing to look at online or to catch at the library in about a week or so and uh, see it for yourself. And I'll have a couple copies in my office if somebody wants to come grab the hard copies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, Madam Mayor, other than that, you have a resolution in your packet, but if you have questions for Jim, now's the time. Any questions for Jim? I have Darryl. That medical office building listed under one of your slides, a number back, what is that? The medical office building is the building that's between the hospital and where the Mayo Clinic building is up on the hospital site. Um, so we've had a clinic in there in the past. Now there's a daycare that operates out of part of that. Um, Mankato Clinic leases a portion of that. Um, that was funded through the city of St. Peter, not through the hospital. It's accounted for on a separate basis, although the hospital team manages the day-in, day-out operation of that facility. So it's kind of where the piano used to be, if that helps from, uh, no, okay. Anyway. I remember you mentioning it when we were up to you know, yeah. the city building. Yeah, okay. that's what it is. Any other questions? Hearing none, the resolution is on page 31, accepting 2021 financial statements together with independent auditor's report. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Councilmember Sharstrom. Aye. Councilmember Buflat. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Bettis. Aye. The resolution is approved. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Jim, Thank you very much. All right, next up, under new business, 2022 Broadway Avenue and Sunrise Drive Improvements Project Bid Award. Pete is back with us now. Well, and before Pete gets going, we do have two resolutions in your packet, but we'd like to withdraw the second resolution, which is on page 37. 37. Um, so we're looking for you to approve the bids only tonight, the agreement with the state. Um, we still have to get completed with the state, and it will come back to you at that time. Thanks, Todd. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem and City Council, uh, you guys have been a part of this project now for about a year or so, and uh, city staff and Bolton Mink put together a set of plans and specifications, and we have that bid out. Uh, we did receive two bids for the project. Uh, you can see those in the uh, on page 32. Um, we did have an engineer's estimate where the cost that did come in, the low bidder was Dirt Merchant, at two million one sixty three four thirty three seventy six is about 15% higher than the engineer's estimate. Uh, one of the things I can say about the engineer's estimate is that estimate has been out there for about a year. So as you know, we've experienced roughly 15 to 20% increase in just cost since that time. So um, no doubt we were right on the money where we thought we would be early on. Uh, just lucky to get two bidders for this project. Um, most of the overrun and cost is related to supply chain, fuel, and resources that the contractor needs to use uh, to make things happen. Uh, there is a map on page 34 
that shows how the project will be developed. There is a resolution on page 35 and 36. Um, and the project funding sources um, will turn out to be, as on page 33, uh, 1.25 million in grant, uh, 115,000 roughly in utilities uh, improvements, that's water and stormwater, uh, about 871,700 in municipal state aid, that's our funding sources from the state that we receive money for. And then county state aid, that would be the county's portion of them participating in this project with one of the four legs being uh, the responsibility of the county. Uh, total project funding would be about $2.5 million. That's roughly 348000 more than what you see as far as the contractor's award or the contractor's request for funding on that side. And that'll be, uh, that 348000 equates to uh, a few of the costs that we will have for the total project here. And that includes uh, engineering and design and construction. Uh, construction testing, observation, right-of-way cost, and the ICE study that determined what we were going to install there. Um, so roughly 16% of the total project will be in those, those fees. Um, I'm available for questions. I'm requesting that you approve the resolution on page 35 and 36. Any questions for Pete? Go ahead, Daryl. Um, this is a, a complete contract. There's really no city forces involved in this, correct? We will be participating in the observation, so we will have some cost as but far as... No construction. You're nope. not doing any of the construction. It's no, all we are done not. by the contractor. All right. the paving, all that's done by the contract. Correct. Thank you. Go ahead, Emily. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, so the total project is $2.5 How was it arrived at the county's um, contribution to that? Just curious. Sure. Uh, the county has a, a cost participation policy that we implemented when we built the roundabout by the new high school. And that really worked well during the first phase of that project. Since we had a couple legs going into that roundabout, uh, we used the same formulas and worked with their staff uh, to make this happen as they have one leg uh, coming into this intersection. The city has the responsibility for three legs. And so we used the same formulas we did for the previous roundabout. Right. Thanks, Pete. You bet. And I had asked the question earlier um, that because the amount, the total amount of the project increased um, based on the bids, that the county also, based on their formula, had to increase. Sure. I don't know the exact number that we had originally right. talked with them about, but it was incremental to the project. Right. All right. The resolution is on page 35 and 36. Awarding bid for the 2022 Broadway Avenue and Sunrise Drive intersection improvements project. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. The motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Councilmember Bruchka? Aye. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Pettis? Aye. Councilmember Sharstrom? Aye. Resolution is approved. Thank you. Next, under new business, 2022 Clark Street Extension Project Bid Award. Mayor Pro Tem and City Council, as you're aware, we have been working uh, with a developer along Clark Street to build phase two of the apartment complexes uh, extending west on Clark Street. Um, we did have several bidders for this project. Uh, the engineer's estimate for the project, which includes um, installation of water, sewer, <coughs> curb gutter street and sidewalk um, was 630,486. We did have uh, a couple contractors that came in underneath the engineer's estimate. Uh, GM contracting was a low bid at 591,284.12. That's roughly 6% under the engineer's estimate. So they are very hungry for the work and are ready to get going uh, should council act tonight. Um, again, uh, this will be a project that will be uh, managed by city staff, observed by city staff, and hopefully we can stay ahead of the contractor uh, that's building the apartment complexes as they would like to get things going as quick as possible. Um, there is a map on page 40 that describes or shows the uh, aerial photo kind of what we're trying to accomplish, and there's a resolution on page 41 that we're asking approval of. Any questions for Pete? Go ahead. Um, you said assessments. There will be assessment hearings in on this one, or they waive their assessments? 
They waived it. Go ahead, Todd, if you want. They waived that as a part of the development agreement for this, Daryl. So there's not a separate agreement other than this is included in the development agreement that they signed. And then the properties to the south and to the west would be assessed in also or not? In the future, the city owns those properties. Okay. And so you'll be able to apply those costs as development occurs. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? The resolution on page 41, awarding bid for the 2022 Clark Street Extension Project. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please, Barb. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Pettis? Aye. Council Member Sharstrom? Aye. Council Member Brooklyn? Aye. Resolution is approved. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. All right. The next up is reports. Um, I, I wanted to report that uh, 4th of July parade was very fun. I walked with Shannon, our, our wonderful mayor, <laughs> Shannon Noel, um, and my son, and uh, we were right behind Daryl, the fire truck, and I got to see some of, some of you also in the parade. Um, but we, we really had a good time passing out candy and seeing people from the community. The fireworks were really spectacular this year. So um, congrats to the sponsors and the chamber for putting on a really great show for the community. It feels good to all be together again after, you know, we had a great year last year, but this was also pretty wonderful. Thank you. Todd? Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I have uh, three items that I'd like to cover. First of all, the MRVT board meeting is tomorrow in the Traverse de Sioux room at 2.30. The two primary agenda items um, are certainly review of the audit and financial statements, just like you went through here. They'll go through tomorrow with MMKR. And then the second, maybe even more important, is um, approval of the grant application to the state of Minnesota which is the primary funding source for transit, both in St. Peter and LeSueur. So those are the two primary items. There's a few others, but those are the big ones, certainly, tomorrow for MRBT. Um, fire station groundbreaking, I'd like to mention, and you should all be aware, um, and we got in your calendars early for some time, but we're planning to have a fire station groundbreaking at 4.30 next Monday on the 18th up at the site. Um, so all of those of you that can attend would be great. There'll be the traditional hats and gold, gold shovels and a few other things there. Um, I do want to mention um, that our goal was to time this so that you could all then attend the workshop afterwards. So um, please make sure that that's still on your calendar. Um, there'll be a little bit of a program and the building committee is meeting tomorrow and we'll provide just a little bit of input on that. This is a little bit more casual than, than a grand opening would be. Um, and I want to mention every time we talk about this project, I have people ask, well, when is the new fire hall going to be completed? Um, right now the target timeline is August of next year, maybe September-ish by the time they move. And uh, so we'll have another celebration at that time as well. Lastly, I um, wanted to mention all the community activities. Well, I'm not going to talk about them. I'm hoping some of you are going to provide information, if you'd like, over the 4th of July longer weekend. Lots of activities, including the all-school reunion, the fireman's dance, and just a bunch of class reunions and activities that Gustavus were going on. So I don't know if anybody wants to comment about that or share anything. This might be an opportunity to share, but I would echo the Mayor Pro Tem's comments and congratulating the Chamber of Commerce for all their work. Um, certainly um, your police department and um, your public works department put in a lot of work related to all of these activities in trying to ensure that things look good and are usable um, by the folks that not only live here, but the folks that come to visit us uh, for all of these activities. So anyway, I leave the floor, Madam, uh, to you and to any of the members. I just wanted to say that I'm always impressed, like every year, how fast the that Washington is open and cleared out and clean after the parade with thousands and thousands of people there. And then as I'm coming home, I don't have to take any detours. It's just, it's all done. <laughs> it's just really impressive. So thank you to your team and everyone who's involved with that. They're outstanding. Yeah, they really are. Anyone else? Fire dance went really well. We had really good numbers. It was beautiful weather outside. Yeah. Um, it was very nice. Went very that well. was very well attended. Very well attended. And yes, the, was. the band was great, mm -hmm. and everyone seemed to be having a really good time. Good, time. good to get back together again. It's the first one we've had in two years. Wow. So, three years. We missed two of them. So. 
it just never seems to amaze me year after year seeing the 4th of July and what St. Peter can bring in as a community and the different organizations coming together to make a great experience for anyone who comes to, to town or lives here. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, that's all I have for reports for tonight. All right, the only action left is to adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Nicely done, Mayor. Pro there you go. Nicely nice done. Wow, <laughs> 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 You're not in the